It's not unusual for one little mistake to grow into a situation beyond your control. And sometimes, the only way out of it is to do the wrong thing for the right reason. Because you love someone. And that's what our story is about in this episode of Still the Beaver. and hit the ground if you fall for building. <laughs> into my yard for 30 years, now even the girls are doing it. If this happens again, I'll make sure that you are locked up for good. Now take your ball and get off my property. Hey, Beaver, will you hurry up? I don't want to have to chase a plane down the runway. 
I really appreciate you taking me to the airport, Wally, and I am going to bring you a nice souvenir. Fine, as long as it's not another one of those plates with a picture of the state capitol. <laughs> but they're worth a whole lot more if you have the whole set. I think you overpacked it, Tad. Mom, this is an important account, and I want to be prepared. I took my business suit, my casual suit, my swim suit, my sweat suit. How about your rocket suit for when you miss the plane? Okay, we're out of here. Bye, Bean. Oh, 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 Mom. Make sure the boys do their homework, uh, take a bath, and brush their teeth. Beaver, I do those things when you're here. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't forget, tomorrow's Alvish class picture. So lay out a suit. I've already done it. Beaver, I've got a class reunion meeting in my house on Thursday night. I'd uh, kind of like to be there. Fine. Boy, don't let Oliver eat too many of those sugar rush candy bars. That's what they're called? Truth in advertising. Come on, let's go. Bye, Mom. Have a good trip, Beaver. Beaver! You forgot your airplane, Kenneth! <laughs> Grandma, look. Honey, have you got a toothache? Nah, I'm just practicing smiles for my class picture. <laughs> I like this one. Well, could use a little more enthusiasm. It's hard to be enthusiated when a tie is cutting off your air supply. Well, uh, come here. Maybe we can undo this top button until picture taking time. Thanks. When I grow up, I'm gonna get a job where you don't gotta wear a tie like a plumber or a monkey trainer. <laughs> what have you got in your pocket? Oh, uh, it's a comb. Mm-hmm. Smells like chocolate to me. It's a chocolate comb. <laughs> A sugar rush candy bar. Now, what your father told you about these? That they're bad for my teeth, and they might make me go nuts like that lady who lives in the fountain downtown. Close enough. You know, I'm surprised at you. Just because your father's out of town doesn't mean you can take advantage of me. Oh, come on, Grandma. He wouldn't be a kid if you didn't try to get away with something while that's gone. Well, he's wasting his time. Child hasn't been born who could put something over on June Cleaver. Well, I'll see everybody later. Oliver, be careful not to spill on your suit at lunch. Oh, don't worry, Grandma. On picture day, all the guys take their clothes off and they eat in the bath. <laughs> Picture suit. They already took the picture, and you'll never wear it again. Unless somebody kills over before you go out of it. <laughs> nah, I better not. I might get dirty. Not the way you play. <laughs> Come on, Ollie, be a guy. I'll hit it right to you, so you won't even have to sweat. <laughs> well, I guess maybe a couple. <laughs> Get ready for my curve, Marcus. Come on, Duffy, pitch it. I got it. Go for it. Oh, oh you could have that. by this big guy. Make it two big guys. <laughs> Even better. And tell them you're lucky to be alive. And that way you'll be off the hook and they'll hug you because you're still breathing and everybody's happy. Yeah. Thanks anyway, Stuffy. But my grandma's too smart. Even for a slimy kid like you. <laughs> bye. See ya, bye. If you will ever see Ollie again, uh, don't worry about him. His family doesn't go for hitting. They just want him to feel bad about what he did. <laughs> I'd rather get the belt. <laughs> I want to play some more, so... Come on, let's find the ball. Here it is. I got it. Stay here and I'll hit you some grounders.
change in front of you, but since you're only my cousin, you'll have to wait in the bathroom. <laughs> in the living room, please? Just let me change first. Now. <laughs> Mr. Slog, what are you doing here? He's here for an apology. Really? What did he do wrong? The only thing I did wrong was not calling the police. Mr. Sloan says you broke his window. I didn't break no window. He's lying. Oliver? Did you play ball on the way home from school today? Well, it wasn't a real game or anything. All right, uh, then you tell Mr. Sloan that you're sorry. No! I ain't apologizing for nothing I didn't do. Well, this is exactly what I expect from kids these days. It's the way they're brought up. No discipline. No respect for their elders. Not in my family. Oliver, you apologize to Mr. Sloan. No, I won't making this up because he's a mean old man. Oliver, that's enough. I'm terribly sorry. You get your apology, I assure you. I won't be holding my breath. Good day. Oliver, I have never been so embarrassed in my whole life. Grandma, why don't you believe me? How can I? This morning, you try to tell me that a candy bar is a comb. Then you say you were attacked when you were really playing baseball. And now Mr. Sloan brings me proof that your ball went through his window. He could bring you a trillion baseballs with my name on him, but I still didn't break no window. Oliver, I don't want to hear another word out of you until it's an apology. Okay, fine. Then these are the last words you're going to hear from me. Oh! Grandma. Thank you. How are your eggs, Ollie? Cold. Oh. So, how'd you sleep last night, Grandma? Just fine, dear. Yeah, me too. How about you, Ollie? Oh, I'd say I slept fine. But someone probably wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Come on, boys. Getting late. Tell Grandma I have two legs. And I can use them to walk to school. Grandma, when are you two going to start talking again? Ask your brother. It's up to him. Hello? Hi, Mom. It's me. Beaver. Hi, Dad. 
So, how are things going on the home front? Oh, everything's wonderful. <laughs> Couldn't be better. You didn't even ask if you're in charge. Oh! <laughs> What's the matter? I'm just getting my complimentary massage. What a novel idea. Well, it's not a regular service. They ran out of fruit baskets. So, uh, how did Oliver's class photo go? Oh, he looked fine when he left. And, uh, how's Kip? Well, he's taken a sudden interest in interpersonal communication. Hmm. He's probably trying to meet a girl. Well, uh, everything's fine here. And it sure does make me feel good knowing that you've got everything under control. <laughs> Bye. Grandma, why didn't you tell Dad about Oliver? Because I can handle this myself. Thank you. You don't have to get mad at me. I'm not the little liar. <laughs> Well, we have a lot of ground to cover this evening, so I guess we better get started. Uh, yes, Julie? I'd just like to say I can't think of anyone who could do a better job of organizing this reunion than Wally Cleaver. Julie's still trying to land her plane on Wally's runway, huh? <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, Julie. Um, recording secretary, please make note of the fact that, uh, present at this first meeting are, uh, Lumpy Ruth... Clarence Rutherford, uh, Edward Haskell, Tui Brown, and Julie Foster. Oh, and don't forget Mary Ellen Rogers. <laughs> Mary Ellen Rogers, Cleaver. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I think the first thing we ought to do is assign committee heads. Is anybody willing to take food? Try a lumpy. He'll take it any way he can get it. <laughs> Party har har, Edward. I'll take care of food, honey. Okay, great. And I'll hire the entertainment. Hey, I object. Anybody that was president of the future foot doctors club has got no right being in charge of entertainment. <laughs> hey, didn't you like the guy I hired to make the animal balloons at your bachelor party? It's not that, Tui. It's just that you're the biggest bore I've ever known. <laughs> None taken. Uh, Tui, just get a band we can all dance to, okay? Um, now, the invitations are probably going to be the hardest job, what with trying to track everybody down. Now, I'm willing to be in charge, but, uh, I'm going to need somebody to work very closely with me. <clears throat> yes, Julie? I'll do whatever you want, Wally. <laughs> Honey, on second thought, since we live in the same house, it'd probably be more convenient if I worked with you. <laughs> Julie, dear... Do you think you possibly could handle refreshments all by yourself? Oh, I'd love to, Mary Ellen. And Wally, I'll come by your office tomorrow and we'll discuss the menu. Perhaps a wine tasting? Excuse me for interrupting, but I need to talk to you, Uncle Wally. It's important. Hey, what's the squirt doing here? He didn't graduate with us. <laughs> Neither did you, Eddie. <laughs> oh, uh, Kip, um, we can talk in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Uncle Wally, you just gotta do something about Ollie and Grandma. Uh, still at it, huh? They're driving me crazy. They're not even talking to each other. Dad's gonna be home tomorrow. Well, look, I just don't see what I can do. You know, your grandmother has a mind of her own. Then talk to Ollie. He doesn't have a mind at all. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, uh, I'll come over later and see what I can do. But don't tell your grandma. She wouldn't want me to interfere. Thanks. I better get back before grandma gets suspicious. She thinks I'm on the roof adjusting the antenna. <laughs> from a nap, and, um, I guess I thought I still lived here. <laughs> Gee, I gotta cut down on my caseload. Come on. Wow, wow, wow. 
Easier to get up that way when there was a tree out there. It's even easier if you come up the stairs. Yeah, well, I didn't want your grandma to see me. Oh, you two ain't speaking either? It's not that. It's just that I think it would be a good idea if you apologized to Mr. Sloan. And I'd rather she thought it was your decision. You don't believe me either. Ollie, it's no longer a question of the truth. Right now, it's more important that you and your grandma make up. But I didn't do nothing. Look, I never had a client who didn't claim they were innocent. And whether they're guilty or not, my job is to give them the best advice I can. But I thought if I told the truth, nothing bad was supposed to happen. Oliver, I wish life were that simple. But the truth is not always black and white. If you want to have any peace in this family, you're going to have to swallow your pride and apologize. Grandma? Oliver? I'm ready to go to Mr. Sloan's now. Okay. So it's you. Yes, sir. I came by to say, I'm sorry, my ball broke your window. And you were a little late for that. Some kid named Dumpy or something already owned up to it. <laughs> Dumpy Guthrie? Why in the world would he do something like that? The little delinquent said he was so upset he couldn't even watch TV. <laughs> Good, I say. So it wasn't you. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Doesn't matter which kid threw the ball. I beg your pardon? You heard me. They were all a bunch of troublemakers. Mr. Sloan, I think my grandson has proven he's anything but a troublemaker. And if you can't appreciate what he's done here today, then why don't you take a long walk off a short pier? <laughs> Good day. <laughs> that man, thinking you were a liar. I guess I didn't believe you either. It's okay, Grandma. He doesn't have no reason to believe me. But I don't understand. Why did you do this? Well, this may not make any sense. But remember last summer when I fell off my bike and my knee got all scraped up and scabby and I came in sort of crying and everything? Yes. Well... You made those silly faces when you put on the iodine so it didn't sting so bad. And I don't know how you did it, but whenever you took the bandage off, it never hurt. Well, what has this got to do with Mr. Sloan? Well, I figured getting yelled at by old Mr. Sloan would hurt a lot less than if I had to take off my own band-aids. You know, I don't think anyone's ever said anything nicer to me. Come on. Let's treat ourselves to a couple of sugar rush candy bars. This close to lunch? Oh, come on. Let's live a little. Almost midnight. That late? I must have dozed up hours ago. So, uh, how was your trip? Great. We got the account. Congratulations, Dad. 
you meet any stewardesses on the plane? No. I couldn't even get one when I spilled hot coffee on my lap. So, uh, how'd everything go here? Everything was great. Couldn't have been better. Best time we ever had. You know, that really takes a load off my mind. Maybe I'll go out of town more often now. <laughs> That's great, Dad. Just promise me one thing, okay? Sure, what's that? Next time, take me with you, please. <laughs>